ओम नमोलोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती अरियंतानम ओम नमोलोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सिद्धानम ओम नमोलोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती आये यानम ओम नमोलोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती ओजायानम ओम नमोलोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सावनम ओम कारम बिंदु संयुक्तम नित्यं धायंति योगिनम कामदम मोक्षदम चेव ओम कार आये नमो नमः नमः समय सारा या स्वानु भूतिया चक्का सके चित स्वाभाव भावाय सर्व भावांतर चिदे अग्नान तिमिरंगा नम नाना अंजासला कया चक सुरुद निर्तम्ये न तस्मय से गुरु है नमः तीर्थं करो जगत ना जय वंतवर्तो ओंकार ना दजिननो जय वंतवर्तो जिन्ना समो सराना सौजय वंतो वर्तो में तीर्थ चार जग माजय वंतो वर्तो नमो ये तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नादने ओंकार संगरों ते ने नमो तेजस्वी कुंद कुंदने अहो उपकार जिन वरनो कुंदनो ध्वनि दीवनो जीन कुंद ध्वनि आत्या अहो ते गुरु का नमो अहो ते भगवत मातनो द्रुव अचलने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वेशी दने वंदी कहाँ सुत केवल बासित आसमय प्राप्त अरे मुक्तिक सुद्ध सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय कर कहीं अन्य ते मारु जरी परमाणु मात्र न थे अरे जम नेत्र ते मुझ ज्ञान न थे कारक न थे वेद करे जाने जो कर्म हो दे निरजरा बंद ते मुझ मोक्ष ने ओम नमः सिद्धेव्यो ओम नमः सिद्धेव्यो ओम सी सुधा माने नमः जय जिनंद्र uh, today is a uh, Wednesday, October 25, 2017, and we are continuing our discussion on uh, uh, Samesa. Uh, we have finished 12 stanza, and uh, almost it took almost about mm, close to three years, I guess. And we went through an extreme detail. So, what we are doing right now from last session and today's session is just to put everything in a concise way to find it out where we are how everything is flowing and so we went through the first stanza for example it was a manglachara at the same time he takes a vow to say anything about pure nature of the soul <clears throat> so what is the pure nature of soul siddha bhagwan so he bows down to siddha bhagwan but then ultimately he says my pure soul is a siddha so he establishes this nature of soul in the very first stanza and then a Kunkun Acharya Dev says, but what is this soul looks like? So in next next time he says, soul could be a, a deluded state or soul could be the pure state. Then third time right says, this pure state is very difficult. Impure state we have seen, and when when substance is independent, it's pure. When it merges with other guys, then it becomes impure, and so the soul became impure since time infinite. Then, what he says that I'm going to show you now nature of soul with my own experience, and also from the scriptures I study, and from the logic that I learn, and also from the scripture that is pro propagated through the uh, omniscient Lord's uh, uh, lineage. But self experience, experience was more important at the time. So those are the things when he says, now he comes to nitty gritty thing that what is this pure soul? So now it is in the kind of question answer things or every stanza had a heading and that heading tells what is coming in this stanza. So in six stanza where we are right now, in six stanza it says, what is the nature of the pure nature of the soul that I should be longing for. That's a student is asking question. What is the pure nature of the soul that I should be longing for? So that is the essence of the sixth stanza. In fifth stanza, also he said, uh, Kunkunachar, they said that I'm going to show the nature of the soul 
which is a pure and which is devoid of all the associative finding. So then the question comes that what is this nature of the soul that you are talking up to stanza five? You talked about pure and impure and gave more important to pure soul. What is the nature of the pure soul? So now it comes a six stanza. So I'll go to the slides. Um, hold it, it may not come here. <clears throat> Bear with me, I need to quit this guy. <clears throat> Uh, okay. <clears throat> Stop share and Give me one second. Where am I? Where am I missing my slides? Okay, here it is. <clears throat> okay, so we are on the sixth stanza, so I'll bring the sixth stanza over here. Stanza 49, slide 49. So this is six stanza we have here. It says, Koda so suddha atmeti chitta. Means, Ave prasna ubje cheke eva suddha atma korn cheke janu sarup janu joye. This is the question asked by the student that what is the nature of the pure soul that I should be knowing about it? So answer for that question is given in stanza six in stanza seven. So first we'll just sing the stanza. Nathi apramata ke pramata nathi je ekadnayak bhavache erita suddha kathaya ne je gnata te to te jache. What it says over here, up to five stanza there was introduction. Acharya Dev said that there is going to show, he is going to show the nature of the pure soul in stanza five. Now, curious listener is asking question: that What's the nature of the soul that you mentioned in stanza five? So six and seven are answer for the question. Eternal soul separateness is shown here from its modal aspect, even though mode belongs to the soul substance. Now here, uh, Kun Kun Acharya Dev says. I'm going to show the nature of the soul. Now, two ways you can show the nature of the soul from knowledge perspective and from uh, uh, faith perspective. 
knowledge perspective means soul has a substance soul has an infinite attribute soul has a mode soul has a mode which has origination and cessation and constancy and all those things are constitution of the soul that comes as a in the knowledge description of the soul it comes but in in, in that whole description there is something which is most important for me <clears throat> when i'm going to the store to buy banana i go to the fruit section and i separate section of banana from the oranges and apples and pears and grapes so that's a gross form of separateness but now when i bring the banana at home the wife says okay take the skin out and that's it Wait a second, I paid the money for the skin and banana both. White part pulp of banana and skin, I paid for the both. She said, that's okay, but now most important part is the pulp that is important. So here also, now that I separated from all the six universal substances, I said, this is so. But what is important in the soul? So when I'm entering into the property of the soul, what is the most important thing? I'm a thief and I selected a house and I want to go and steal the money from the house. I want to just get the most precious thing from the house. Where will I go? Will I go in kitchen? Will I go in bathroom? Will I go in garage? Where will I go? Because I've seen, I've studied that house so well and I said, there is a, 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 a hidden compartment in which everything is kept, most precious things are kept. And so my important thing will be to go to that place only, even after entering the house. So similarly, when I'm entering the soul substance, and the soul is there, even substance is there, attributes are there, modes are there, all those things are there. But what is most important? Then most important thing is eternal soul substance. Even the modes and uh, 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 modes, um, uh, um, uh, 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 soul sex preference so on here from its modal aspect, even the mode belongs to the souls after. So, so modes are also made separate over here. From first to six uh, 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 spiritual development state, there is no, now really, remember, when we are talking about eternal soul separateness, how will I do the separateness? Then it says, is it separate from the body? Is it separate from rag and dvesh? Is it separate from moral? What is it separate from? Then it says, very nitty gritty thing, very, very microscopic thing. It says, from the first to sixth spiritual diagram state, there is non attentive state, means pramat dasha. Means, in the first to six spiritual development state, I am expressing myself with the attachment to the uh, uh, deluding state. I'm getting attached to the inclination of attachment and aversion. I'm getting attached to the rag and dvesh. And so that is called non-attentive state. That is the one, it is not the nature of the soul. So I need to separate that one out. Okay, so then one mode is separated out in which there was a rag and dvesh involved. Then, <coughs> what is Pramad Dasa? Pramad means inability to stay within the pure nature of the soul. Pramad means inability to stay within the pure nature of the soul. So now, I am not able to stay within my soul, so that needs to be ignored and to be made secondary. So up to six standard as a spiritual development state, soul is in the in, in, in instability state with having influence of attachment, means asthirta no rajshe. At the time from one to six state, there is an instability state. I'm not able to remain stable within myself. So I'm getting attached to the rag and way. So now, so if that is taken out, now what remains? from 7 to 14 spiritual development state, there is a pure modal state. Pure modal state means there is a purity in the mode. 
purity in the mode because mode has directed attention to the eternal soul substance and the so, so, mode has been engrossed in in the true nature of the soul but this is also a mode this is a transient thing even though it's a purity but it's transient it lasts for a some one summer only so that is also not my true state when it's an instability nature of the one to six spiritual state that is not my state even the modal state of seven to fourteen is also not my state of course my spiritual development those are the st steps will be coming on my uh, spirituality first to 14 steps will be coming but they're modal in nature because it's modal it's transient and transiency is not my nature my nature is eternal pure immutable permanent substance so i'm separate from instability and separate from pure modal state also in the present discussion when it says alien objects then one must consider the influence of attachment at such a state only alien object doesn't mean that okay this guy is away from me that's not true that's not the one that we are talking this guy said body is separate from me we are not talking about that one the material karma of separate from me yeah they are separate i'm not worried about it but the rag which occurs in my mail impurity state occurs in my mode that is not my state as well as purity occurs in the mode also because mode is transient so that is also not my state <clears throat> so here those are the things we already talked about that this is the body is not mine uh, I mean, it's a house, family, money, etc. Not my physical body is not my material karma is not my influence of attachment and aversion is also not my state. So when we talk in this present discussion and now onward, six times onward, all the time when Acharya Bhagwan says that uh, uh, I'm talking about alien object means this state means influence of attachment and aversion means rag and dvesh occurring within me is also considered an alien object now example of fire and wood it is giving right now fire is known to have property of combustion now it takes the shape of a substance that that can be burned now if this plastic cube is burning then fire is taking the shape of that one if this physical body is burning fire is taking the shape of the physical body if the table is burning fire is taking the shape of the table when fire burns wood or dung cake then it takes the shape of that substance but this shape of the fire did not occur just because it was burning wood or dung cake fire took the shape by itself it was not because of a burning wood or dung cake that our fire is appeared to be that shape. Actually, this is a shape of the fire only. Fire has made its own shape. And at that time, this wood, for example, was an instrumental core. So fire appears to be having that a cubical shape, for example. <clears throat> so this is the that's a picture that we have seen from before. Now fire does not have dependency on the subject that it is burning it, the fire has no dependency on this subject when it is burning fire has its own shape while burning wood or dung cake this fire does not have impurity means dependency of taking shape of the substance that is burning and fire is dependent in independent it takes its own shape so when when there is a rag rag is involved my soul appears to be totally full of anger deceit ego and greed but that is my soul's own doing not because you made me angry and that's why i'm angry you could be instrumental cause instrumental cause does not do anything to the nature of the soul in the, the, the principal thing so that's what it's trying to say over here 
Then we have the Gnanakar and Gnanakar. This is a famous slide we already know about. Substance, knowledge attribute, and this is knowledge mode. And this knowledge mode, shape of the knowledge mode is Gnanakar occurring by itself. This mode, this mode occur by itself because the soul, knowledge attribute, and knowledge mode. Now, at that time, there is a, 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 a peacock over here as an instrumental cause in knowledge mode by itself created shape within its within within the mode and so we are we, we keep on thinking that a, a peacock is a reason that there is a uh, image over here but the image creation was done by the soul and by knowledge attributed by its mode by itself. Nobody else was a reason for that. So this was independent action occurring over here. Similarly, there is a rag over here and that rag will be having the illumination here, but the soul will be making that illumination by itself. So that's what we have seen from before. And so now fire and knowledge that we are the fire taking shape and of the wood and everything, we are comparing those things. <clears throat> so object having capacity to get burned means the coal, knowledge. Object of knowledge means inclusive of attachment, rag called name means this object of knowledge is an inclination of attachment. <clears throat> fire has a shape of burning coal fire took the shape of the burning coal exact shape of the object illuminating in the knowledge mode is called gnayaka so this rag rag is getting illuminated and in the knowledge mode rag is getting illuminated that simple that thing <clears throat> fire shape is due to self and not due to coal shape of the knowledge mode is by itself and not due to object fire has independence and not having impurity of the shape of the core knowledge mode is independent independent and does not have impurity due to the due to due to the object means that uh, uh, rag and last thing shape is due to fire itself illumination the knowledge mode is due to knowledge itself Gnanti Gnanakar shape. So that principle we have to learn in the sixth stanza number one and then further going and we have gone through all these things so that's why we are going fast. I would like to finish ho hopefully everything. All knowing virtue of the soul means Gnayak Ba. What does that mean? It means with eternal soul Trikal Swaru without any of its more. Ultimately, soul has all those things present, but everything is made secondary and I'm going aiming to the eternal nature of the soul only. There is no attentive or non-attentive inclinations present. Means even the modes of purity and impurities are made secondary. Absence of auspicious, inauspicious inclinations, shubhasu, bhavno, abhav. There is no auspicious inclination. There is no inauspicious inclination when i am talking about the faith where is my faith to be directed it has to be narrow it has to be pointed everything else has to be made secondary one has taken away his attention from fruition of karma and directed to its eternal true nature of the self <clears throat> it's like supreme soul this, it, it, this is like supreme soul jin swarup <clears throat> eternity <clears throat> dhru swarup an indivisible bed, bed, a bed means now eternal soul substance is a supreme it is eternal entity and it's indivisible that is the one that i have to make attention to so six is six times i says make attend make importance to that uh, that play uh, that, that state only <clears throat> eternal existence without any changes means samanya there is no changes occurring within now Having known that in a sixth stanza, it says that I'm separate from the pure modes and impure modes. So from modal aspect, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm away from it. Then in seventh stanza, it says, wait a second, not only modal state, 
but I would like to go also to the division of the attributes and arm separate from the division of attribute. Eternal soul substance is separate from the division of the attribute. What does that mean? It means this stanza says that the charitra darshana gnana pana vyavahara kathane gnani ne charitra nahi darshana nahi nahi gyana gyaya kasuddha che the conduct, faith, and knowledge. They are separate. When we consider them separate, that is called conventional point of view. But in the absolute point of view, when uh, of eternal soul substance we are talking about, there is no presence of division of the conduct, faith, and knowledge. Remember, eternal soul substance is indivisible. And I cannot perceive indivisibility because I have not seen that one before. I have not experienced that one before. So when I talk to the uh, 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 learned teacher, I say, you have experience of the soul. How do you, what do, what is that nature of the soul? So he says, it's an eternal soul, indivisible soul which I have not experienced, so I don't understand what he's trying to tell me. So then he says, okay, you know the divisions, you know the conduct attribute, yes, you know the faith attribute, yes, you know the knowledge attribute, yes, so soul is not a knowledge attribute alone, soul is not the conduct attribute alone, soul is not the faith attribute alone, soul is not in those division of the attribute state. It's a indivisible in nature. So sometimes person who has not grabbed the essence of Samesa, he will listen to this stanza seven and says, you know, Kunkun Achara Dev was crazy. He says, Chari, conduct is not there, faith is not there, knowledge is not there. Then wait a second, are you nuts? What are you talking about? Well, division of those attributes is not there. That's what Kunkun Acharya Dev is telling. He says that those divisions are not there. They are present in the soul in the indivisible pattern. So he stresses that point very, very effectively. And so that is the essence of seven stanza. In the sixth stanza, it says, I'm the pure nature of soul. Remember the question was, what is the nature of the soul that I should be knowing about? That nature of the soul, which is devoid of modal, modal parts, pure modes or impure modes. At the same time, it is also devoid of division of the attributes because all the attributes are in indivisible pattern. There's a bag of rice and there are millions of rice particles in that bag. But they are separate. Each, each, each rice part, particle is separate from the uh, other one. Here, the, the, all the infinite attributes are merged with each other. So if you take any space point of the soul, all the infinite attribute will be represented in one of those innumerable space points of the soul. So that's what he's trying to say, that those attributes are indivisible they are not in division yes we are talking in the divisional pattern but they are in indiv indivisible passion so inclusion of attachment auspicious you know, inclinations are not true nature of the soul that we talked in sixth stanza nature of the eternal soul uh, true self is with right knowledge faith and conduct so the modal aspect is not there i understand but there is presence of right knowledge faith and conduct when one considers this as separate, then divisions are produced. And so separateness is not there. I need to know the indivisibility of those things. So indivisibility from the eternal soul is to be perceived. Now, one is unable to obtain right faith if aim at the alien object, aim at the auspicious activity, increase of attachment and aversion, aim at the mode 
or even aiming at the division of the attribute. So I cannot get some darshan if I keep the attention to the, all these guys. And remember, the alien object, which is mainly we just talked to about, is a ra. This is the auspicious activity, means auspicious inclination occurring within me. Then, rag and dvesh, division of the modes and division of the attribute, they are not myself. And so I'm beyond that one. So those are the things we have to consider. Knowing that part, knowing that part, that sixth and seventh stanza say that sixth is pure nature of the soul devoid of any modes. And seventh stanza say pure nature of the soul devoid of any division of the attribute. So then student is asking question that, wait a second, if there is a pure nature of the soul, eternal pure nature of the soul is to be aimed at. Why do you use this division pattern and everything? Why do you say that the, that the soul has a knowledge and soul has a faith and soul has a knowledge, I mean, a conduct attribute and everything, and conduct is so many different types, knowledge is of five different types, and faith is two types. Why do you do all those divisions to me if important thing is eternal soul substance only? Tarhi paramartha avaiko vaktavya iti che. Ave pari prasna udha che ke jo emat che, to ek paramartha no chupdes karo jo ye. Vyavar samati ke osho. If this is important, then why don't you give me the, the, the discourses on the pure nature of the soul and forget about this division of the conventional point of view? What is this important of conventional point of view? That's a question student is asking. So, Basha Anarya Vinana Samaja Vishakaya Anarya Ne Vyavahara Vina Paramartha No Upadesa Ema Asakya She. Now, teacher says, Yes, student, I know you are getting in, you are getting restless. You want to know the eternal soul substance. You want to aim there. You want to obtain some darshan. You want to go on the path of uh, uh, liberation. And ultimately, you want to obtain liberation. I know that very well. But, but, you don't understand the language of the eternity. You don't understand the language of uh, indivisibility. Because you have never experienced those things. You have never experienced e uh, the indivisibility of the eternal soul substance. That's why. Then, this uh, example given over here. What example they said? That there is a one uh, uh, illiterate person is there. Shepherd is there. Who is a totally illiterate person. And now... I go there, or, or then somebody goes there, he knows the Sanskrit, and he says, Swasti. Swasti. Swasti means, Swasti, means, you, uh, I wish you have eternal, you get eternal benefit from the soul substance. I wish, I give the blessing that you get eternal peace or eternal purity of the soul substance. That he spoke in swasti. This is a Sanskrit word. The guy does not understand. So he keeps on looking at this guy that, wait, what is he talking? I don't understand. What is he talking? What is he talking? So the next guy, he knows the shepherd language as well as he is his expert in Sanskrit. And he says, over here, it's been said that you have blessing to have eternal peace coming from within. When he hears that word, he becomes very excited about it because things have been told in his language. So when he's been told in his language, he understands we are that shepherd, we are that ignorant person, we do not have experience of the eternal soul substance. And that's why we are looking for some 
conventional aspect, something to be told in my language. And that's why Acharya Bhagwan says that even though eternal soul substance is important, but I am talking to you in your language, which is the modal language, which is the language of rag and dvesh, which is the language of auspicious and inauspicious inclination which is the language of the division of the attribute and all those things are called conventional point of view and that's why i'm using conventional point of view why am i using conventional point of view acharya bhagwan says because you only understand that language the small little child new, new uh, toddler he doesn't understand the languages he speaks few little little few words here and there, and he says "boo boo." I want "boo boo." What is "boo boo"? "Boo boo" means he wants water. So I also go there. And I say, "Hey, here's a boo boo for you." Wait, am I saying right? For that child, it is right thing because now. I need to convince him that yes, you are looking for water, and this is water. So you have to speak in the uh, uh, ignorant person's language. And that's why, even though important thing is eternal soul substance, but it, the, the discourses are given in the divisional pattern. The language has a limitation, and language can come only in the divisional pattern. Understanding has to be done in that language, and ultimately, when you assimilate, that assimilation has to be done in the indivisibility. So, this this convention point of view is a medium of presentation only. So that's what it says in the stanza eight. <clears throat> in the seventh stanza, it said, even the division of the knowledge, faith, and conduct attributes a conventional point of view. Learner students asking question, then why are they described in the scripture? Why the convention point of view is described in the scripture? Scripture, and that's why this question, this uh, this is the answer. And those are the thing, this uncivilized person that we talked about, and all those things. So we can keep going there. Um, one must understand that conventional point of view does not lead one to an absolute point of view. Remember, one has to have clarity in the mind that conventional point of view is a medium of presentation only. The learned saint, he knows what's an eternal, in, indivisible, pure nature of the soul. He wants to convey that eternal, indivisible, pure nature of the soul, but in my language, ignorant person language, so he's using conventional point of view, but his aim is to make sure that listener also ultimately assimilates in the indivisible pattern. Uh, Srimadji, in the um, um, uh, in the twentieth stanza of Apurva, uh, um, uh, he says. Je Padasi Sarvogne Dithu Gnanama Kahi Sakyama Nei Tepan Sri Bhagwan Jo. Bhagwan has experienced the eternal soul substance, but language has a limited the limitation, and that limitation cannot give the expression of the indivisibility. Other day I was reading about the Sutagnan. Sutagnan means a scriptural knowledge of two types. Aksharatmak and Anaksharatmak. Anaksharatmak means not expressible in the words. Aksharatmak means expressible in the form of words. So only I have only medium of words in front of me. Bhagwan also says words in front of him. And so he cannot explain the indivisibility of the eternal soul substance. And so he has to use the words which is a convention point of view. So convention point of view is simply a medium of explanation of the fact. For the uncivilized and barbarian being, convention point of view is used to convey the message of absolute point of view. Small little child has been explained. 
showing him the cat and he's been told that this cat the, the lion is like this cat same shape same four legs same kind of tail and everything and it's a bigger one but lion appears to have similar like this this kitty that you are seeing so this cat becomes kind of medium to have him understand what is the absolute point of view means what's a real lion look like no enlightened teacher preferably monk he's prime he's in primary abstract comprehension means nirvikalta state then in reflective thought state he ends up explaining nature of the soul in the divisional explain aspect is explained student understand in the divisional aspect assimilation has to be done in the indivisible form this is the essence of the stanza eight you have been explained in the conventional form but assimilation has to be in the indivisible pattern so that's what basically is, is, is eight stanza is there so now now we come to ninth and tenth stanza katham vyavarasya pratipadakta miti cheto means ave e prashnam pada ka vyavar ne parmatma pratipada kevi rite che eno uttar gatha sutra kahe che let's sing this stanza for सुत थी खरे जे सुद्ध केवल जान तो आ आत्मने लोक प्रदीप करा ऋषि सुद्धि केवल तेने कहे सुत ज्ञान सौ जाने जिनो सुत केवल तेने कहे सौ ज्ञान आत्मा हो now in the eighth stanza with the ignorant soul and everything it's been said the conventional point of view is a medium through which absolute point of view is been explained so then the intelligent student is asking question that conventional point of view Conventional point of view. All throughout, you are saying it's wrong, 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 wrong. But you are over here. You say conventional point of view shows absolute point of view. Conventional point of view gives the direction towards end absolute point of view. How? How does it happen? Give me one example for that. Eight times I say. In the ignorant person, we have to talk in conventional point of view, but he has to ultimately assimilate in the absolute point of view. How is this conventional point of view is going to show absolute point of view? Please give me example of it. So over here, example says, "Sutta thi khare je sudha ke." I think there is one. No, okay. "Sutta thi khare je sudha ke or jan to atma" means me and you. and we, we all are right now reading scriptures we we'll, we read the scripture we listen to the discourses we ask questions and ultimately we make the decision about the e eternal pure nature of the soul who am i gopal dev said hu kon chu kya thi thayo su swarup che maru kharu ko na sabande valagana raku ke pariharu amulya tatva vichar ni andar karo so what does it say over here that uh, from sutta gnan from scriptural knowledge by listening by reading by arguing by asking questions all those things now i know what's the real nature of the soul in the reflective knowledge pattern in the vikalp dasha now i know who what is my true nature now sutti khare je sudha kevar janto atman to now after having determination made about my true nature now i go within from reflective thought process from vikalp dasha now i go to primary abstract comprehension means nirvikalp dasha when i experience my eternal soul substance then 
the 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 rushi, lok pradip kara rushi means of keveli bhagwan says that you are a sud keveli means you are scriptural omniscience what did i do here i listened to the scripture i digested the scripture i listened i, I read the scripture i listened to the scripture i assimilated that one and after that i experienced myself nirvikat dasha primary after comprehension and that's why i can be considered as a uh, scriptural omniscience means this from absolute point of view now now in the second stanza it gives example of the convention point of view sut gnan so jane jino sut kevli tene kahe so gnan atma ho ne sut kevli te thi thare what does it say over here there is another person who just studies the scripture and studies and studies and he knows all the 12 original scriptures remember the original 12 scriptures they have i think close to 112 million chapters are there and each chapter has uh 51 crore means to find a 10 million uh, stanzas are there enormous amount of scripture enormity enormity if i know atma siddhi by heart 142 stanza if i know samesa uh, this of uh, uh, 415 stanza if i know uh, uh, bhaktama 48 there's nothing just not even peanut this is whole huge amount of scriptures that one and one when studies it understands when he goes through all this 12 original canons bar angnu gnan jena thai che original 12 canons of knowledge that means he has experiencing of the soul also so first he studied all the things studied and studied and studied and because he studied the essence of all those 12 original canons is say that you have to experience a soul so he experiences now the soul so that's a conventional point of view the first stanza it says that this is the absolute point of view that i understood within my capacity and i reflected inside and now i have primary abstract comprehension that nirvikalpa and that means i have experience of the soul and he has been said to have knowledge of all the 12 canons even though he has not read everything on the other side the guy knows all the 12 canons detail absolute and then now he ends up experience so that is the second stanza is a convention point of view ultimately it is showing the absolute point of view so over here the pyavar parmatno pratipada kevi rite che so convention point of view ultimately shows the eternal uh, absolute point of view so this is the example which on the eighth stanza which was a, a fact was given over here this two stanza give the examples now so we'll go through quickly about those slides basically those are the thing it says student is raising a question how come the convention point of view elucidate absolute point of view in previous stanza it was said the convention point of view shows uh, or, or, or elucidates absolute point of view on one hand it's been said that convention point of view needs to be discarded and on the other side you say that conventional point of view elucidate absolute point of view so you are using your contrad contradictory statement so uh, give me example and explain to me how these two sentences are true and that's what 9 and 10 stanza says in 9 stanza it says you understand experience your soul that's it you are a, 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 a scripture omniscient period that's it even though you have not read all the things absolute point of view and other side it says you have laid all the 12 canons huge 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 knowledge you gathered that means 
you have experiencing of the soul means the 12 canons convince a point of view ultimately show what is the real essence of all the 12 canons that is to understand the real nature of the soul so that is the of our heading of the stanza and then there is a detail of all those things that come which we already talked about it so we won't go in much of the detail absurd point of view he, with his sacred knowledge scriptural knowledge one ends up knowing the eternal true nature of the soul this is the guy he just understood and decided who is my real nature of the soul remember that sto story we have said sometimes before uh, shiv buddhi muniraj shiv buddhi muniraj has very 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 low iq and he cannot remember anything he has no, he cannot simply remember, remember simple things also and at that time his teacher his guru became so frustrated and says shiv buddhi you are no good get out from my my, 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 my from my uh, uh, congregation so this shiv buddhi muni comes out and he's kind of very sad that my guru has to throw me out just because i can't remember so he's walking and walking and going through a town small village and one lady was trying to 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 separate now i have to tell you the gujarati word supri i don't know if you know supri means there is a uh, 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 she has done the, the she has the grain mixed with the skin of the grains and what she's trying to do is to take this grain on the one side and she's taking the skin of the grain she's throwing it out so she tells the he's asking lady what are you doing well i'm throwing the skin out and i'm keeping the original grains with me so mastus the tus means this uh, skin and mas means the the, the the original grain he says wait a second this was the thing my guru was trying to explain to me the soul is separate from the body and uh, same way this lady is taking the uh, original grain with her and take the skin out so mastus mastus he sits down and he just meditates on it and ultimately he ends up getting omniscience knowledge he did not have complete knowledge he did not attend this samasar classes from 1 to 12 stands on all the details and everything on the other hand somebody has read all the 12 huge canon and all the 12 canons and then ultimately essence of the 12 canons is to understand the real nature of the soul so that's called convention point of view when you go directly with your knowledge scriptural knowledge and of knowing the eternal soul that's every point of view one ends up knowing all 12 canons of knowledge therefore he knows everything in the scriptural knowledge you also ends up knowing the eternal self as the results of the uh, as the result of the knowing all scripture is to know the eternal soul only so this is a convention point of view through knowing all the canons this sentence is from absolute point of view as there is indivisibility of the knowledge and the eternal soul substance here he ends up knowing soul with his total knowledge of 12 canons therefore knowledge is the soul here the division is created therefore it's known as convention point of view therefore one can say convention point of view is a illuminator of the absolute point of view that is the essence of nine and ten stanza convention point of view is there it illuminates the absolute point of view so wrong assumption absolute point of view absolute point of view can be achieved remember this word achieved through conventional point of view it is a wrong assumption conventional point of view is there but it cannot help you to achieve absolute point of view right assumption convention point of view elucidates here achieved here elucidated so in a conventional point of view shows the nature of absolute point of view conventional point of view cannot take you to the absolute point of view this is the showing and this is going this is showing this is going this is wrong assumption this is the right assumption so we, we have to keep that one in mind because of this 9 and 10 stanza
this Sutta Kri and everything. Now, stanza 11 comes. Stanza 11, Gurudev loved this one, and Gurudev said that stanza 11 is a heart of the Samaisa. He loved this one. In a Kauga Samaisa, no pranche. Says a Samaisa, this is a heart of Samaisa. What does he say? Kuto Vyavarnoyo Nanu Sartavya Iti Cheta. Avevari Prasna Udache, Pelam Koike Vyavar Nangi Karnakaro, Punjo Parmatno Kenarsa, the Vyavar Nikemangi Karnakaro, and now Uttar of the Gatha Keshi. See, in the initial stage, six and seven stanza, it says, forget about convention point of view. Only absolute point of view is important. Then on eight, nine, and ten stanza, it says, wait a second. Convention point of view is important also, that you cannot ignore convention point of view. Then in 11, it says, then why should I not accept convention point of view? What's wrong for me to accept convention point of view? Why you keep on saying convention point of view is wrong, 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 wrong all the time? So over here, uh, uh, Acharya Bhagavan says, Vyavahara nai abhutartha darasita suddha nai abhutartha che bhutartha ne asrita jiva sudrasti nishaya hoya che Emphatically, emphatically, Acharya Bhagavan says, absolute point of view is right one and convention point of view is wrong, wrong, wrong. He is very, very determined and emphatically he says that point. So he says only absolute point of view is important. Forget about convention point of view. So Amrita Acharya Dev, remember this stanza is written 2000 years back. I think about 49 AD or something. And Amrita Acharya Dev came in 10th century. And he analyzed and he says, wait a second, Kunkun Dev is so emphatic about it. So there is something more in this stanza than simply these two lines. Simply, simply saying that convention point of view is wrong and agreed point of view is right. Something more has to be there. So he, as if, as if Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev enter into Kunkun Acharya Dev's heart and says, wait a second, Kunkun Acharya Dev, what were you thinking when you wrote this stanza? And so Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev gave commentary. And as a result of that commentary, he explained absolute point of view and conventional point of view in detail, which we took a long, long, long time in, our, in stanza 11. We are now expert in knowing those things. We'll quickly pass through those kind of things and understand why he is saying absolute point of view is right and conventional point of view is wrong. What is conventional point of view means over here? So that's what 11 stanza says. So 11 stanza is a, one of few stanzas are very important. As we said, six, six, six stanza is very important. Six and seven, 11, 13, 38, and uh, 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 320 stanza. And there are a few other, other stanzas are there. So these are the ones that we have to understand. Uh, can you give me one second? One second. Maybe I'll call you in 30, 30 minutes. Okay, I'm in the class. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so over here, I, I, uh, Amrit Chanacha Dev makes the division of absolute point of view and convention point of view. And so, we know so six and seven stanza convention point is not to be accepted. But if it illuminates uh, uh, absolute point of view, then why not to accept it? This stanza is answer for such question raised by the learned student. Meaning of the stanza: convention point of view, vyavarna is untrue or abhuta. Pure point of view means suddhane is a true one, bhuta. What is a pure point of view? What is a suddha nay? Suddha nay means what? What's a pure point of view? Pure point of view or absolute point of view, those are the same interchangeable words. It's a mode as partial point of view is a mode. Eternal, innate state, the all knower virtue of the eternal true nature of the self, Nayak Bhav is also pure point of view. 
in this stanza, subject of pure point of view is also known as pure. Don't worry about too much about in this one. Absolute point of view is important. Absolute point of view means eternal true nature of the soul. That's it. So, pure point of view is a partial point of view. It's more. Remember, when is a pure point? Any any time when we say partial point of view, partial point of view, partial point of view, nay. Nai, nai. What does nai means? Nai means it is a part of the sutta It's a part of the scriptural knowledge. Scriptural knowledge, then there is partial point of view falls in that one. Scriptural knowledge means true scriptural knowledge, not the wrong scriptural knowledge. And the first gunsthanak, like us, there is a impure scriptural knowledge means our scriptural knowledge depends on the alien object like books and listening and all those things but when on the fourth spiritual development state one comes and this srutagnan this scriptural knowledge becomes pure knowledge impurity is gone now in this pure knowledge subdivision partial point of views are there so partial point of views are present only in this samyak darshi jeev only in the enlightened soul so that is an important thing that we have to understand and that partial point of view is a modal state modal state and but it's subject this mode subject is an eternal true nature of the self the eternal substance I have a mode right now. This mode is a transient in nature, and seven, six times it says, "I'm devoid of the mode. I ignore the mode. I made the mode secondary and everything." And but still, this mode has directed its attention to the eternal soul substance. So, eternal soul substance becomes more important. So, even though this mode, this partial point of view. They are present in a modal state. They are present in the in, uh, uh, transient way, but the transiency has directed attention to the permanency. So, eternal pure nature of the soul can only be perceived in the mode, because the the, uh, uh, the soul as a substance is inert. There are no changes occurring. All the attribute, including attributes of knowledge, are also inert, and there is no activity going on. Only activity occurs in the mode, and that mode has now looked into the eternal soul substance, and that's why eternal soul substance is come to know. I, I came to know my eternal soul substance through my modal aspect, but my mode, where is the there was attention? Eternal soul substance. Both the mode and the all know substance, soul substance are considered as pure point of view. So, mode is a pure point of view for sure, but its subject, all know soul substance, is also called pure point of view. So, now, someone having knowledge of 11 can, this is okay, we can just pass, bypass this slide. Um, author says, convention point of view is untrue or satyar. Modes are to be said to be untrue. Modes, modes do exist, but by making them secondary is said to be untrue. And eternal true nature of the soul is only true entity, satyat. So this one says what is true and what is untrue. The modal state is untrue and uh, eternal soul substance is true state. Um, now, when, when Amritsandra Acharya gives the Convention point of view, he gives four division of convention point of view and he explains in general pattern. Just now he expects, explains everything in general pattern. Then he goes somewhat special detail about it. So, Upcharit Asadbhut Vyavarne. Put your seat belts on because now it's going to be rocky, rocky ride is coming up right now. Upcharit Asadbhut Vyavarni means convention point of view with figurative point of view expressing unity of the distinct entity means this phone belongs to me. 
this phone is separate i'm separate but i put my ownership on it so what is the house money family are mine that kind of ownership on the alien object which are away from my soul's space point i'm sitting over here this phone is sitting over here they both are separate space point and i just put my ownership on it that's a upcharit asad but vyavarne now anupcharit asad but vyavarne means convention point of view with literal point of view expressing unity of different substances means the object and the soul substance occupying same space point what is that body and senses belongs to me i am the soul body is separate senses are separate but i believe that i am the body if i will believe that that is called anupcharit asad but vyavarnai so first alien objects are mine that's a first first part of the convention point of view second is my physical body is mine there is also a convention point of view third one upcharit sadbhut vyavarne asadbhut means wrong means two entirely separate substances i consider them as mine so this is the house etc they are mine that's wrong this is the body is mine that's wrong now sadbhut means it is present within me but it can be removed something is present within me but can be removed so that's a upcharit sadbhut vyavarnai and in that one inclusion of attachment belongs to me i have a rag and dvesh i i am the generator of rag i am the generator of dvesh and everything so rag and dvesh inclusion of attachment and inclusion of aversion auspicious inclusion inauspicious inclusion those are the things they belong to me they are transient they can be removed in the in the uh, uh, omniscient lord those things are not present so they are because they can be removed so it's called vyavarnai but because they are actually present within my soul substance even though they are staying the transiently so it's a sadbhut vyavarnai and last thing anupcharit sadbhut vyavarnai means sadbhut means present within me anupcharit means cannot be removed and vyavarnai means there are divisions created means knowledge is me i have a knowledge attribute i have a conduct attribute i have a uh, 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 faith attribute i have a eternal existence attribute i i have knowledge attribute i have conduct attribute means the conduct knowledge everything is inseparable from the soul but i create artificial division and so it's called anupcharit sadbhut vyavarnai this is in general this is conventional way of presentation this is normally people understand but amritsar acharya says you know i can't give you that easy way out you have to understand from the soul's perspective see this house money family are my house is separate money is separate family is separate and they are mine body and senses belongs to me body is separate senses are separate i am separate means soul is separate if somebody declares me dead this body will be burned to burn, burn it out in a thousand degree of fahrenheit heat right now if there is a instro if, if temperature goes up slightly i feel very uncomfortable but when i am in the furnace when the person is dead and he is in a furnace there is no question about it so body and senses even though they are occupying same space point they are different from me so these are conventional this is the general way of understanding but now he talks about this one that we already know this side so we are not going to go vyavarnai now he 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 baba amrit chandra acharya dev makes convention point of view in such a way that everything remains within the soul's territory only and applies all this four convention point of view means inclination of attachment getting illuminated in the knowledge mode coarser and finer form 
that that's why this was the uh, 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 slide were over here. This peacock or increase of attachment, either of the one, the peacock is a one that we talk, but actually it's a rag. This rag is getting illuminated in my mold. So this rag is eliminated in my no more. This rag could be of two types. It can be a coarser form or it could be finer form. Finer form cannot be picked up by intellect. Coarser form can be picked up by intellect. I'll give an example. I'm extremely angry right now. Well, it's a coarser form of anger that I see it right now. My heart rate has gone up, my eyes have become red, my speech has become slurred, my, 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 my body starts shivering everything, I start perspiring. All those signs are the sense, uh, showing that I am angry right now. So it's a coarser form of anger, but it's also a finer form of anger, which I'm not able to pick it up. What is that one? My eternal soul substance is pure and my nature is to remain within me only and I become angry at my eternal soul substance and I just go and uh, uh, I, I go into the influence of attachment state. Run. This is my Bhagwan. This is my temple. This is my grandchild. This is my family. That kind of rag when I do it, when I forget about family and money and all the, but this is my Bhagwan. This is my temple. This is my Samesar. When I express in those regards, that means I came out of my eternal pure nature of the soul. Sugar's nature is to give sweetness and sweetness and sweetness all the time. Instead of that, sugar starts showing uh, a salty taste. Can it ever happen? No way. My eternal nature is to stay within my pure nature. Can I be in the in terms of attachment state? No way. But when I become into the in terms of attachment state, I'm a very quiet person sitting into the temple and singing the uh, 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 hymns of the Bhagwans and everything. Because at that time out, uh, I'm out of my eternal pure nature of the soul. That's why I express anger to myself. Am I angry sitting in temple doing bhakti? says yes. You are having so that's a non perceivable rag, non perceivable anger. So, coarser anger, I saw it. Finer anger means not to stay within and to express myself in the alien objects or to any object, be it Bhagwan or be it my guru or be it my scripture, those are called that I should anger to myself. That's a finer form of anger. So coarser form of anger and finer form of anger, both, both are called asadbhut, upcharit and anupcharit. Upcharit means coarser form. Anupcharit means finer form of anger, which my intellect cannot pick it up. Knowledge mode knows inclusion of attachment by itself, alien by itself having alien illumination property knowledge mode now ends up knowing this anger about the, this influence of attachment influence of attachment is illuminated in my knowledge mode and i end up knowing this knowledge mode and that is also part of the vyavarna because it is a sadbhut upchari and then Anupcharit, Sadbhut, Anupcharit means knowledge mode knows the soul substance, self illumination problem. This is alien illumination property, means I know the um, rag, 
this is the self animation property i know my eternal soul so that is also called sadbhut anukshari so these are the way he described those of four convention point of view which are present within my territory of the soul only and we have understood that one very well but he says 11th standard says these are all wrong these are wrong these are wrong these are wrong having known all this thing i broke my head i just it is really difficult to understand and then ultimately you say it's wrong convention point of view is wrong convention point of view is wrong absolute point of view is right so that is a 11 stanza now uh, having said that all the things and we have gone all these things so i'll just go quickly um so upcharit asadbhut vyavarne means coarser form of a rag getting known in the knowledge mode means buddhi purvak no rag what is it called buddhi purvak no rag means anger which i can perceive anupcharit asadbhut asadbhut means it can be taken out final form of inclination of attachment getting known in the knowledge mode or buddhi purvak no rag upchare sadbhut vyavar nahi means this is the sadbhut means it's present in the soul but it is transient in nature so knowledge mode ends up knowing rag by its own self and alien knowing capacity swapar prakashak shakti i have the knowing capacity i can know the alien object i can know myself when i know the alien object means alien object getting illuminated in my mode and i know that one that's called utcharit sadbhut vyavarne and knowledge is a soul means eternal soul substance getting illuminated in the knowledge mode that is the anucharit sadbhut vyavarne and knowledge is a soul i am who gnayak chu i am all knower soul substance i am all knower that's all i do morning till evening but still it's called convention point of view and convention point of view will not give you absolute point of view so that's a 11 stanza that he goes in detail about it and uh, then comes the 12 stanza uh, uh this one you already know this part so i'll just quickly go through it um okay now comes the 12 stanza uh, in the 11 stanza or actually they were so emphatic and says Moral state is wrong. Moral state is wrong. Moral state is wrong. And now suddenly he realized, wait a second, I spoke so hard about it that people are going to take wrong message going home. So let me turn around. So he turns around and says, wait, I told you the absolute point of view is right, convention point of view is wrong, but, but. convention point of view is not to be ignored and now he talks that thing in the stanza 12 what does he say e vyavarne pan koi ne koi koi ne koi vakte prayojan vanche this convention point of view is having its own importance so don't throw it away don't throw it by the wayside yes 11 stanza it threw it away all the four convention point of view wrong 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 but wrong from which perspective wrong from the right perspective wrong from the eternal soul's perspective but when i am passing through my spiritual ladder those things comes on the way the convention point of view they do come on the way so it has its own important how is that important that's in the 12th stanza dekhe param je bhavate ne suddha nayagna tavya che aparam bhave sthitane vyavahara no upadesha che um convention point of view is always associated with absolute point remember only whenever we say conventional point of view vyavar name means it is always associated with absolute point of view 
and when you say absolute point of view or conventional point of view means it is a right form of scriptural knowledge and when you say right form of scriptural knowledge means one is on the fourth spiritual development stage means one has a self realization means one has atma darshan means one has samyak darshan enlightenment so without absolute point of view without absolute point of view is known as a convent uh, uh, the convention point of view is known as vyavara bas it's called fallacy of convention point of view if there is no absolute point of view means if there is no samyak darshan do i have do you have do every that other people have it when they don't have it then we cannot say convention point of view a point to note over here when we say absolute point of view convention point of view let's say that uh, the pot maker made the pot from the uh, clay pot maker made the pot from the clay so pot was made pot pot's existence came from the clay is a absolute point of view and pot maker created pot is called conventional point of view that means does it mean that there are two forms of pots are created one is a absolute pot and one is a conventional pot no pot is a pot is a pot only one pot is there but the 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 kathan uh, paddhati means there is a one way we express from absolute point of view that the pot is coming from the clay only so that's a absolute point of view of sentence talking and pot maker made the pot it's a conventional form of expression so these are absolute point of view and conventional point of view are expression they are not the reality reality is a pot pot is a reality but from if, if absolute point of view i'm talking then pot was created from the clay when i'm talking convention point of view pot was created by a pot maker pot is a pot is a pot so that's what we have to make sure that convention point of view and absolute point of view is a, a sp spoken words or expression in the form of words only okay now Convention of point of view is useful to someone for sometimes taking refuge in the eternal soul. One obtains enlightenment. We know that purity has just started; it is not complete yet. That is important. At the fourth in spiritual development, said purity just started. I exp I understood the eternal soul substance. I experienced eternal soul. So my purity started going up. and at the same time i also say impurity within me they start proportionately going down as i'm going up with my purity the same thing to impurity proportion starts going down and down and down so those things are going in reverse uh, reverse way so when i have a purity going up presence of impurity is called conventional point of view purity is absolute point of view impurity state is conventional point of view they both go hand in hand till i obtain complete purity and there is zero impurity present so till i obtain complete purity from beginning of the purity till complete purity there is presence of impure state proportionately present and those impurity is decreasing purity is increasing so impurity present along with purity is called conventional point of view and that is one has to know that part because only the purity state is a inside situation i can, one cannot visualize what is a purity but when there is a purity going on at the same time impurity is decreasing and that impurity for example if there is a person in the fifth spiritual development state then he has a um, lesser vows are been observed that 12 vows are been observed in that person so that person who has a samyak darshan 
on the fifth spiritual development state, he has a uh, uh, he's he's seen to observing twelve lesser vows. When there is a monk on the sixth and seventh spiritual development state, which I can't see from outside, only from outside I can see that he is observing five great vows, five carefulnesses, and three restraint, Panch Samiti, Thron Gupti, Panch Mahavrat. 13 types of conduct is been it been observed but those things are conventional point of view those things are the impurity state the purity is within cannot be expressed outside so these are the impure state will be seen in the form of 28 primary virtues of the monk or the the 12 lesser vows observed with the uh, uh, fifth spiritual development state and all those things are present so there are conventional point of view now now the most important thing over here it says when the conventional point of view is there it is there for knowing purpose and not for adoration purpose that's an important word comes in the 12 stanza knowing purpose 12, 12 uh, the, 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 when person is uh, on the aspirant state from 4 to 12 spiritual development state purity is progressively increasing at the time impurity which is progressively going down that impurity is for knowing purpose not for adoration purpose so that is a point that is expressed in a 12 stanza that means that person is seen from outside to have those of about 12 lesser vows or five greater vows depending on what spiritual state he is on and those are for knowing purpose not for adoration purpose adoration is an internal pure state and so that's what it says in 12 stanza if you say in the 12th he said, he said that uh, see if you ignore the convention point of view then spiritual development state fourth state spiritual development state fifth spiritual development sixth and seventh state those are the aspirant stages towards achieving the final goal of omniscience knowledge now if i avoid convention point of view totally that means i am i'm not considering fourth spiritual development fifth and sixth and seventh spiritual development state i don't consider those spiritual development state then i don't consider the results of the spiritual development state which is omniscience knowledge so in the 12th stanza it says if you ignore this um, aspirant stage that means you are ignoring the tirth. Tirth is a the, the aspirant stages preparation. And tirth pal, tirth pal means the results of the aspirant stages is the omniscient stage. And those are modal states. Modal states are transient in nature, but they are present. So if I ignore those states, that is also wrong. And so that's what 12 stanza says. So on this 12 stanza, basically, uh, Kunkun Acharya Dev has given total understanding of the Samaisar to us. In sixth stage, it says exactly what nature of the pure nature of the soul that I should be observing. And thereafter, it says convention point also comes, which is to be not to be ignored. So, so this way, first 12 stanza means you have pretty good idea about what Samaisar is. And thereafter, up to first 1 to 38 stanza means there is going to be complete experience in the soul will be described. Thereafter, next level will be 1 to 415 stanza further expansion of all these facts are there. So if we understood all this thing pretty well so far, means we have solidified our base very well, and now whatever happens next will be easy to understand. Not that 
oh, Acharya Bhagwan is going to make it easier for us. But he's going to, now he knows that you you have wet your feet pretty well into this water. Now he's going to pull us deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper inside. And it's going to be only a one-way street. Going deeper and deeper and deeper till we end up getting experiencing of the soul self. So this is our 12 stanzas there. So we have completed those things. And I took whatever number of years or weeks or months or years, whatever it took, it's worth. Now we'll be going to 13 stanza from next week onwards. Any questions so far, please. If there are no question, then maybe we can just do the closing. Okay. Javani ke gyan se suze loka lo Sovani mastaka namo sada deta ho do Ninth artha maka mandra Mitya and Dukram, thank you. Jai Jinendra. Jai Jinendra, Mitya Mitukam. Jai Jinendra.